What's going on everybody? My name is Marcus. Welcome back to another video. Today is December 30th and I have hit $138,000 uh, on eBay. Let's show you guys right here. $138,000 for the year. Uh, it's a little bit lower than I expected it to finish out at, but this last month, if you can see that big down 10.4%, uh, it's just, you know, a trying month uh, that we come into. But hey, 138,000 is still very, very good for my first full-time year and being a reseller, man. And I, I owe it all first to uh, God. None of this is possible without God. But second of all, I owe it to the daily refinement mentorship because they taught me all the tools that I need to make uh, a six-figure income off my reselling business. Lots of valuable information. Number one, lay my clothes out the night before right reset the zero is what it's called so reset your workstation so that way in the morning time all you got to do is get up and come straight to work if i didn't lay these clothes out i'd have to lay these clothes out to then get started on my work day and that's not fun it is what it is but you know this is the first step into me getting my business going what i need to do first though is customer service so Every morning when I get up, I accept offers, I send offers, I check my messages, and we're gonna do that right now. I got two offers. Let's see what they're for. Um, I got a pair of Abercrombie and Fitch pants. Somebody, I think the offer was for five bucks. I have them listed for 15. They're tripping. So uh, I really don't wanna take these pants or take this offer, but I'll look and see how long they've been listed. They've been listed since August 4th. So, and I got them on sale for 975. So apparently I want to get rid of them. So I think I will accept that offer and just get the ball rolling. What is you guys' method, right? Uh, especially in a time like this where things are not as um, abundant in sales wise as, as I'd like them to be. I'm going to accept this $5 offer and get the ball rolling. Hopefully it lets eBay know that I'm in and I'm ready for business. I got the open sign on my business and I'm ready to make some money. So uh, one sale down, let's check this other offer and see what we got going. The next item is a pair of Levi's 501s. I got them listed for 22 and they sent me a $10 offer. I really, really, really don't wanna accept this offer, but Hopefully, if I accept this offer, it wakes my store up. I have sent two offers, one for 17 and one for 1540. And uh, no one has uh, bought them yet. They've only been listed for two months. I think I'm going to go ahead and accept the offer and get the ball rolling on some sales. Um, I don't recommend everybody do this. I've got like 4,500 items listed. So some of them I can uh, accept a lower offer on to get the ball rolling. Um, you got to do what works for you and your business. I've got 17 um, eligible listings for sending offers for a total of $354. So what I'm going to do is uh, check this box right here for uh, the highlight all of them and send offers in bulk. I'm going to send 30% off offers because I'm trying to move some stuff and um, blow these last two days of Q4 out and see how much higher I can get that number. Um, so yeah, offers are sent. And uh, let me verify this. Offers are sent. I don't have any messages from any buyers on um, any items. So the next step is customer service is done. Um, offers are sent. Now it's time to take pictures. While I do that, I'm gonna log into this Zoom call with Daily Refinement and uh, give me a dose of mastermind and kickstart my business. One of the things that I forgot to show you guys that I do uh, is sending invoices. So what I'm gonna do is um, I have four items waiting for payment, right? One of these are the Levi's jeans from this morning, the Abercrombie guy paid already. So I'm just gonna go through and just click the blue button. Okay, so this is uh, unable for some reason. Maybe it's a glitch, I'll just try it again. Yep, it was a glitch. 
Okay, so the reason why they probably haven't paid is because the shipping is $15.99 because they're going to California. So maybe if I give them, well, I don't want to give them too much of a discount because they already got the shoes for $50 off. So I'm just going to message them uh, and ask them if they're going to pay. So I've sent them a message and it just says, I've accepted your 50% off offer. Can I expect payment? Have a great day. And the only reason why I reiterated the fact that they were, it was 50% off is because they were $100 shoes that I accepted a $50 offer on only because the shoes, the shoes were worth $100 brand new, right? It's a pair of Birkenstock sandals. I couldn't find any comps on the shoes that were not new uh, and knew they were going for like 100, 120. So uh, I figured I'd list them at 100 because they they are like new, but they are not new. So um, I was willing to take anything since I paid three dollars for them. I was willing to take anything above 25, to be honest with you guys, because that's generally around the price. I sell my Birkenstocks for is 25 to like 35 on on average. So 50 to me is still pretty freaking good but uh now they just gotta pay so i sent the invoice on that and i have two more invoices to send as well because as i said one of the four is from today and i don't typically send buyers invoices the day that they purchase something i give them 24 hours before i start sending invoices that's just to give them time to get around to paying uh naturally i don't want to bug somebody but if you do um buy something from me I do have uh, immediate payment on however that doesn't always mean that somebody's going to pay immediately it only means that they're going to pay immediately if they have that set up uh, and you'll know that by when you accept the offer it'll have a little green check by the listing or uh, by the offer that says this buyer has a prepaid payment select uh, payment method selected uh, and you'll receive immediate payment but either, either neither here nor there um, I just figured I'd show you guys that part of the process as well. Another thing that I do is I send uh, newsletters and coupons to my buyer groups every single day. And I guess I could show you guys how to do that as well, just in case you don't know. So what you'll do is you'll go to your um, you'll go to your seller hub and you'll hit the marketing tab, right? And then uh, you go to your buyer groups, and then. I'll send uh, coupons to my followers. Everyone that's follow follows my store, I'll send that, and I send them a 30% off coupon. And then I also send coupons to new followers, anyone that's just recently started to follow me within the last day or so. And then I send coupons to anyone that's purchased anything from me more than 31 days ago uh, to bring them back and I send those coupons. It's real simple. It doesn't take long and it gives like 6,000, well it says 5,400, nope, 5,637 total buyers uh, the opportunity to come buy from me again because eBay is all about getting repeat customers these days. So uh, I'm with it too. I want people to come to my store multiple times. I want you to save my store. I want to send coupons out uh, to give you incentive to come back and shop with me, which is another valid reason to continue picking up like items. These are all tips and tricks that I learned from the daily refinement mentorship. They keep adding value to the group and don't change the price. So you always end up getting more for your money than what you started out at. And I've been in the group for a year and the tips and tricks are not even tricks. The tips are just value. Like you can't put a value on it, guys. So while the two orders that I accepted the offers on have not paid yet, I do believe that it did kickstart the uh, store and I sold this Stanford University sweatshirt for 25 bucks uh, and it's thrashed. It's got like holes, in, well not holes, but it's got like a small pinhole in it and it's got stains on it. And the buyer paid $25 for it plus shipping. So uh, buying or accepting offers does alert, alert, you know, eBay, the algorithm to, uh, you know, let people know that you're you're in you're in business you're ready to go you're ready to accept offers you're ready to sell items and they send you the traffic so uh that's a pretty good sell to start the day off with i'm listening to the call um i'm listening to the daily refinement morning call. so i'm listening to this daily refinement morning call 
while I take my pictures, I just keep it, if you guys can hear it, it's playing in the background. That's the morning routine, right? I wake up, I do all my customer service on the computer, and then I hop into the uh, photos while I listen to the daily refinement uh, master, mastermind morning call, and I drink my coffee. Uh, this is just what helps me get my day started off. Uh, I get you know a lot of stuff done super early and that way I can focus uh, the rest of my day on doing the things that I like I was taking forever right I was listing my photos and like watching TV watching Netflix watching YouTube uh, you know just things that would distract me a lot um, now I just get up I get the work done and I try to get done as soon as possible that way I can do whatever I want with the rest of the day and I do about 55 listings and um, in about five five to six hours maximum um i do 55 clothing items a day right but i save them in my draft bank and i only launch 35 of those right now uh by the end of the year of 2023 my goal is i don't have a monetary goal like i did this year this year i just wanted to hit one hundred thousand dollars in sales my goal next year is with the uncertainty of the market is to just control the controllables things that i can uh control which are i want to get 50 sales a day right so in order to do 50 sales a day i have to list by the math i have to list 12,000 items so i want to get the 12,000 items listed in my store and i want to be able to sell 50 items a day by the end of the year right now i'm sitting at around 25 sales a day uh yesterday i sold 29 items so um if everything continues on the traject the trajectory that it's on, if I continue to list the same types of items that I've been listing at the same prices that I've been listing them uh, or accepting lower offers, I will be able to make the sales and then the money will come from the sales. I don't have a monetary goal. I just want to be able to control what I can control. The birds are going crazy out there. I don't know if you guys can hear them. So another strategy that uh, a lot of people will probably underutilize let me take this phone off, guys, because the podcast or the call is still going. So the volume of it's right in the camera. So anyway, um, I noticed that for me and this is just for me, you know, you guys can run your business any way that you please to. But for me, when I started to see an increase in sales and the money that I was making was when I started selling more items by listing more items right so i can't list 10 items a day right and expect to make six figures uh, a year it's just not possible unless i'm selling like very expensive items but for me and the bread and butter items that i sell it's not going to be possible so i first started noticing an increase in sales when um i started increasing my listings to about 15 per day uh, a lot of people ask me when did i start seeing steady money and when was i able to go full time I was never working a job that paid me a lot of money. My job was paying me $80 every two weeks. So I was always making more money on eBay. So it was a no brainer for me to go full time. However, should I have got a second job while I started eBay? Absolutely. I should have gotten a second job from the jump. I don't recommend anyone jumping into this full time, uh, especially with the uncertainty of next year, unless you're already selling enough money to cover all your bills. Um, so for me, my goal is to next month or next year, rather, uh, start inching my listings up, right? I'm not going to jump right up to 70 a day, but by the end of the year, I do need to be listing 70 a day in order to launch 50 listings a day. As I said earlier, right now I do 55 a day and I launch 35. The goal is to launch 50 a day. So therefore I can get to selling 50 a day by the end of the year, if that makes sense. And in order to do that, I'll need to have two sourcing days. So I'll need to, uh, I'll need to draft bank 20 extra items a day to give me two days off a week so that way I can go do my sourcing on those two days. So I got this Old Navy puffer vest, right? It's new with tags. And at first glance, everything seems fine on it, right? Like pretty crispy, clean condition. Until I get down here to the corner, man, and then that looks like blood. And then there's also some on this corner. So since it's new, I'm not gonna list it because nobody's gonna buy a new item with blood on it. And I don't think it's even gonna wash out. So honestly, I'm not even gonna bother with it. It's probably right at a pound, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, I don't know. So got about $1.89 invested into this item per cost of goods at the bins. 
but since my store, I average the buy cost of every item. It actually only cost me $1.46. So $1.46 uh, is not worth me risking my account health over uh, by me shipping some item out that's got blood on it. So definitely not gonna list that. Sucks, cause you know, it's the time of season for, you know, uh, puffer vests to be selling very well. And it's brand new, so it would've sold quick. But anyway, you live and you learn. And sometimes, you know, you just, I myself am in a rush most of the time when I go to the bins, cause I buy all of my inventory uh, one day a week. And I'm trying to list 245 items a week right now. So that adds up, man. It's pretty difficult to get uh, with the competition of the bins that I go to. So, you know, sometimes I just throw stuff in my cart, new with tags, and I look over it real quick and I'm like, yeah, it looks good. Let's go. And then I get it back home to find out that it ain't good at all. <laughs> you know, so these are lessons I learned. But hey, it is what it is. All right. Hands and my entire life disinfected after touching that puffer vest. Uh... All the photos are taken, so now it's uh, time to get over to the storage unit and pack up my items. I got like 38 items or something going out right about now. Uh, maybe more by the time I get to the storage unit. Um, I don't have a full box of inventory packed up and bagged up yet to take over there to the storage unit with me. Uh, everybody knows, at least the you know people that watch the videos all the time, know that after I list the items, I bag them and tag them with these custom SKUs. I uh, put them in these bags right here. These are 10 by 13 for the smaller items like shirts and t-shirts or t-shirts and uh, button-up shirts. These are for uh, jeans, pants, hoodies, sweatshirts, and things that are too big to fit in the smaller bags. And then I put these uh, thank you cards in the bag with the item and I'll put a custom skew on it. Now these custom skews I bought off of uh, Amazon but they only go up to 10,000. So this roll right here is the last roll I can use. So what I did was I bought these right here, these labels, they're two inch by one inch labels. And essentially what I'll do is I'll make my own skews. Uh, it's like $35 or I don't know, like 30 bucks or something for uh, a roll of these. And then pretty much what I'll do is uh, I think there's 1300 uh, skews on a roll. And what I'll do is I'll make my own labels on the uh, Rolo printer. So I'll just get on there in sequential order and go 10,000 to 11,000. And then each roll, you know, will be another thousand or whatever SKU numbers that I need. And uh, it's way cheaper than what it was to. I was making them on Avery and it was like $150 for um, like 3,000 rolls or 3,000 SKUs. These were like 20, 20 something dollars on uh, Amazon, which is a great alternative because you don't have to print the labels out yourself uh, and you don't have to create the numbers. So that was a good viable option until you know I maxed it out. Now, this is gonna be the route going forward. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, clearly, because you guys just sent me bust open the box, but I'll report back on how it goes and uh, maybe you guys can utilize it as well. So getting ready to get over here to the storage. So getting ready to get to the storage. So next time you see me, I'll be in the unit. So yesterday was my biggest day uh, of the year so far, dollar wise at least, uh, with $670 in sales. Um, if you guys can see that, $670 in sales. And today we're at $208 in sales. And it's only 11 o'clock in the morning, so hopefully today will end up being a decent day as well. Um, but we have 37 items going out. We got 37 items going out for a total of $878. Uh, so a lot of that's gonna be, um, you know, bread and butter sales. There's gonna be some pretty decent $25, $30 sales in there, but a lot of it's gonna be like $10 to $12, $10 to $15 around that price range, which is okay with me. Um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, as long as I do the volume to make the numbers that I'm trying to make, it's, it doesn't matter how I get there as long as I can pay the bills. And uh, I think I've told you guys, well, I know I've told you guys that I have um, 
like $88 a day cost. It's probably actually gone up since I've increased my listings, but uh, I have to refigure the number that I need on a daily basis to uh, be able to pay my bills. And I'm at $208 already for today's sale, so I'm already in the profit for what I need. So it's a good place to be at, you know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't matter how I got to get there as long as I achieve the goal that I got to to make the the money that I need to make to pay the bills is really all that matters at the end of the day so let's get to pull on these 37 items uh, and get it packed up see so we got a variation of price ranges this is a BKE shirt sold for 10 bucks this is a American Eagle hoodie sold for 16 bucks this is a pair of jeans sold for 17 bucks St. Louis Blues hoodie sold for 28 bucks Victoria's Secret Pink Mizzou Tigers Pants sold for uh, $8.45. These Abercrombie jeans sold for five bucks you guys saw this morning. So it's a lot of price ranges that are all over the place to add up to a big total. So uh, that isn't the price range or the business model you're trying to run. There's no problem with that. This is your eBay business to run the way that you want to run it. This is what works for me. This is what the items that I have. <coughs> This is the items that are available to me to make the amount of money that I need to make. Now, if I could obviously pick better items and uh, pick better price range items, I would. But since I do all my sourcing in one day a week and my bins does not cycle out rows, I kind of got to take what they give me. You know what I mean? I got to maximize the amount of items that I could find in a three hour window uh, to bring back to where I'm at to, to do the listing. Um, if you have a Ben's location near you and it's like 15 miles away, you know, like, hey, you're winning because I have to drive two hours away to go to my Ben's. And like I said, they don't cycle the rows out. So I got to maximize the amount of time that I spend there. And sometimes that means grabbing lower dollar items. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking all my items and I put SKU numbers on each one of them. So they go in sequential order, right? So I'll start from the oldest and work my way all the way around to the newest. And then I'll just fill up one of these boxes at a time. Usually it fits about 30 items. And then I'll take this to the shipping station and ship. But um, if you guys see, like each one of these has a number. And I just go to my listings and my sold tab and I'll sort them by custom SKU. So what that does is it puts the, put them in the box in order that they're going to pop up on the shipping page so it maximizes the shipping time and makes it a lot quicker by literally just having to pull the items in order and packing them so that way while i'm printing the label for the one that i'm doing i can bag the next item and while the label is generating it takes about what like 20 20 30 seconds sometimes i can pack the next item and then get the ball rolling and get the uh items packed out uh quicker Sorting it by the custom SKU allows me to also not have to uh, zigzag back and forth in my storage unit trying to figure out which item is next when I can literally just go in a row. So uh, it makes picking and pulling quick too. So this item, uh, Patagonia shirt is $75.73. I sold it for 14, you know, 14 bucks. So what I'll do is I'll find that number. So it's 70. 75 is going to be up here and it said 75 73 so i'll grab my little trusty step ladder 75 73 75 73 pedigree t-shirt 14 bucks okay so i got a box filled i'm gonna just bring it over here I got my shipping station, my shipping supplies, my scale, more shipping supplies and some boxes. It's not the most tidiest of situations or the most organized, but it works for me. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll go to the shipping page, print the label for these Crocs. And what I'll do is it's not the best and most uh, probably um, shipping methods is so I'm just going to throw these in a poly bag. Um, I'm getting out of selling shoes, so I'm really happy to be moving through the rest of these shoes. Uh, Crocs are, you know, these don't break in the mail, so shipping them in a poly bag is, you know, probably not the best and most um, presentable method, but it's the cheapest. So I put them in a bag and they weigh eight ounces. So what I'll do is I'll change this from 15 to eight. It's gonna cost me 
six. It's gonna cost me four twenty-seven. I'll purchase the shipping label, slap it on there, and we're good to go. And that's what I do for all of these. Um, while that label's generating, like I said, I'll pack up the next item. Okay, so the next item is bagged up. I'll take this. Okay, so the next item is bagged up. I'll take this label and put it on this one. And um, the way that I don't mix them up is the one that's next I leave on the scale until the uh, label is printed. And then I'll put this label on there and move it off the desk. So the next order is gonna be the BKE shirt. And uh, I'll just plug in that it weighs six ounces, six ounces. It brings the label to 406 print. And while that's generating the label, while that's generating the label, I'll pack up. And then I'll just do that over and over, guys. Uh, if you guys don't know about this, jeans, it's William Rast. Uh, it's Justin Timberlake's clothing line or jean line. Uh, these jeans sold for pretty good money, man. I got these on vacation in uh, Nashville a couple weeks ago, and uh, I accepted the best offer of $31, so I think I had them listed for maybe 40 bucks. I really can't remember off the top of my head, but even accepting an offer at $31 is still pretty good for a pair of jeans, so William Rast, R-A-S-T, if you guys, you know, see him, pick him up. Oh, and by the way, the buyer did pay for those Levi's, the $10 pair of Levi's to, that I accepted the offer on this morning. So both items that I accepted to get the ball rolling on sales have been paid. For the day so far, we're at $227. Uh, and it's just 12 o'clock. So, you know, uh, does accepting low offers always guarantee that you'll have uh, sales that day? Does not necessarily guarantee anything. But the myth is that well, it might not even be a myth. The theory is that uh, accepting lowball offers or accepting offers first thing in the morning does alert eBay and let them know that you're ready to do business. So, uh, so far, so good. One of the ways I save money on shipping is by using these legal flat rate envelopes. This item right here is too big to fit into a regular priority envelope. However, if I was to ship this, which is two pounds, if I was to ship this jacket at uh, a priority mail rate, it would cost $12.05 versus if I ship it in this flat rate legal envelope, it's only going to cost me $7.90. So be smart. Uh, use different shipping options. I predominantly ship everything in priority mail envelopes or the priority mail legal envelopes. Rarely do I use the tieback envelopes i'll use these when uh, i have to combine orders or just won't fit in any of the other two options and then the rest of my items go out in uh poly mailers or shoes so that's just me that's how i run my business as i said earlier you guys can do whatever you want to do in your business it's yours to run it the way you want to run it i like saving as much money as possible though so it turned out to be 38 items uh going out today so we're going to get these units closed up and get to the post office all right guys future mark is here uh the final numbers for the year ended up being one hundred thirty nine thousand eight hundred thirty four dollars and forty four cents gross i'm writing off twenty twenty three thousand nine hundred ninety dollars and ninety one cents for expenses that's just like cost of goods supplies things of that nature food uh gas uh, not even gas, actually, because I write off mileage. Uh, but, you know, just daily uh, expenditures, supplies, shipping, things like that. Mileage is $10,691. And then the net number is $105,152. So those are the final numbers of the year. And uh, like I said, I use this um, spreadsheet from Cheryl Miller uh, at Simplified Accountants. Pretty good for my first full-time year, right? So that gives me the baseline of what um, I can expect. Hopefully, all things stay the same. I will make the same amount of money next year. But the goal is to obviously make more money next year. I just don't want to make less money because that's you know you're losing if you do that. Reselling can be very lucrative, right? 
You got to put in the effort. You got to put in the work. As I said uh, in many of podcasts, many of videos, many of um, posts, you can't just put in part time effort and expect to get full time money. Right. So five, 10 listens a day is great for pocket change, for part time money, for, you know, filler for vacations or whatever the case may be. But if you're trying to pay all your bills and all your living expenses off of 10 sales a day, it's probably going to be pretty rough on you. Now, I'm sure there's someone out there doing it, watching this video right now. Like I pay all my bills off 10, 10 sales a day. You know what I mean? That's great. It's not impossible. It's definitely not impossible. But for me and the business model that I run, that's not going to cut it. So uh, 38 sales went out today. 38 orders went out today so far. I have sold uh, two more items since I shipped all my items. But, you know, those aren't going to be added into the total of this video. But hey, man, still all in all, pretty good. Can't complain. This spreadsheet right here is uh, provided from Cheryl Miller, a uh, simplified accountant. She um, offers the spreadsheet to the public. Uh, there is a link in the description if you guys want to use it. I do get a small kickback, but the, the spreadsheet is for life. Once you buy it, you'll get an updated one each year, so you never have to buy another one. Uh, it is $125 for the spreadsheet, but it's invaluable. Like I can't tell you how much time this saves me doing my bookkeeping, how much headache it relieves me from doing it manually, and it tracks everything from cost of goods, meals, travel and lodge, supplies, rent, expenses, contract labor, uh, all that, legal and professional services, guys. Everything that you could think of to write off as a deduction for your uh, business, this uh, spreadsheet keeps track of it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and jump into these listings, guys. Um, it is two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, just finished my lunch, man. Some fried chicken tenders. Definitely not the most optimal meal to be eating, but hey, got to treat yourself sometimes. But I'm going to jump into these listings. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you smashed it in 2023. If you have any questions or if I can help with anything, leave it in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you on that. But if not, just smash the like button. Consider subscribing if it's your first time here. That's going to do it for this one. Catch you guys on the next one. But until then, let's make this cash, guys. Peace.